The cool air greets you. The seemingly never-ending rows of color rush into view. They are filled with books, seeing the pages and songs of time and imagination. We are all ongoing books, with pages flooded each day by the memories we capture and feelings we hold. I think of the world as a library, not just because I hope the whole world could have a temperature of that heaven-like place, but because of the people there. These people don't come up to greet you, or simply exist there as your backdrop. They are each an individual book, filled with the adventures of imagination and plot twists, sparkled by the lessons of time. This is a library, your library. Welcome to your world. When I was about six years old, I was sitting at the end of a boat in the waters of Melbourne, Australia. I dipped my hands into the water below, hoping my mom wouldn't scold me. It was so cold. There was all this beautiful scenery around me. The magnificent skyscrapers reaching into the dazzling sunset to where the cool wind was hitting. As I imagine any six-year-old would. When are we going home? I miss the food I was used to. My chicken rice. My stomach was not liking the non-stop wobbling of the boat. Then, I felt a poke on my shoulder. My twin sister sitting beside me was pointing towards the sunset. She sat in awe. The sunset! It is so pretty! It's more purple here than Singapore's. It's the same sunset. Get this, we've had the exact same living conditions. Our parents, rooms, and even clothes have been identical at this point. So why are our thoughts produced so different? Right now, here I am, physically and hopefully mentally. I am currently an occurring and shared memory for everyone who's seated here. Shared. This memory is shared. So shouldn't it be identical? Since we're all listening to the exact same words, shouldn't we be having the same thoughts? We were all born as blank pieces of paper and are the construction of all that we see and feel. So why is that? Why aren't our pages like the mass printed copies of a bestseller book where our point of views and thoughts are exactly the same? This is the question on my page today, which I will attempt to make a mark on yours. For my book, I was born as a buy one get one free set, books identical in book covers and story setting. We share the same family, house, CCA, and pretty much the same place. But don't let this similar book cover fool you. There are small differences in everyday decisions that form littlest drops of ink of different perspectives and lessons that pull together, differentiating our pictures and alphabets, which shape us into individual books of consciousness. Maybe it's because we walked into different aisles of the same libraries, where we picked up different books and stories which brought us into different worlds. Her books of the psychology of speaking made her loud and approachable, while my detective novels and literature pieces made me have sort of a emo vibe, as quoted from my Chinese literature teacher. Thanks, Miss Lin. Whatever it is that made us so different, my point is that if even this pair of buy one get one free books are so different from each other, then even more so are you from any other book in this library. So what does this mean for us? Since we are all so unique in every possible way, we should be proud of all of our differences. Yet, we are afraid. Afraid of sticking out, handing down a pair of open inverted speech commas. Afraid of decorating our book covers freely. To feel, to express, to shout. Afraid of being a book of individuality. The shelves of society has created ceilings and moulds for the growth of our books, and we try to blend in with the colours of others. I found myself doing this in the beginning of secondary school, a new environment. There were so many new people that seemed so interesting, but they all seemed like they wanted to look cool. They would pick up their phones, they feel the awkward silences between sentences, instead of talking to their new table mate. I wanted to look cool like them, so I felt like I should quieten down too. I'm usually very loud and carefree with the people I'm familiar with, so it was a quite a suffocating process. I bottled up the loud and exciting words that would have blossomed on my pages. I muffled myself in the sea of silence and awkward eye contact. 
it did not feel right. But I thought this was me beginning to belong in this new chapter. But that was not enough. Our school has an anonymous confession page where people send in posts about their thoughts on people and basically all the tea and drama. And it mentioned me. What were they complaining about? My silence. They took my quietness as distance, disinterest, and aloofness. I felt confused and misunderstood. The same quietness I thought would blend me in made me appear on the confession page. I was stuck. I didn't know what to do. It felt like there was someone judging me for everything I was unconsciously doing. It was like I was drowning. My breathing was panicked and I could feel the tears swelling up my eyes. Did everyone think that of me? But then, my closest friends reached out to me and I could hear the anger in their voices. How dare they say such nonsense? Don't listen to them, oh my gosh, they obviously don't know you. You see, from that sentence, they obviously haven't heard your goose laugh and everyone has heard your goose laugh. Their heartfelt comfort and validation put me out of the pit hole of insecurity and self-doubt I was falling into. It was like a warm heart that broke through the unkind words. We are the author of our own books. There are bound to be some negative experiences in every complete story. It is a choice for other books to present themselves as a positive or negative character in ours. This can make it hard for us to pen down our most heartfelt words when we know there's going to be a contrast of views from the people surrounding us. But why care about the people who are drowning you in negativity? My friends made me realize that the comments made anonymously online are maybe just not that important after all. And there are people who can see how delightful we are as our carefree selves. Think of the proudest moment in your story so far. A moment which filled your chest and soul beyond the repetitive pages. It's a moment when you stand out. You're shining and loud. Mine will probably be this very moment. And it is my friends who made me open up and sign up for new opportunities that led me from desperately trying to be under the radar to right now, standing here and trying standing here and sharing my thoughts with you. It is these very thoughts and moments that hold the bookmarks when people read, or when you look back and read at your own chapters at the end of the day. So I encourage you and urge you to fill your pages with the daring colors of your own. Break through the constraints of the shelves. Mm -hmm. Let this be a library where books blossom out of the boring parallel shelves of societal norms. To do this, everyone needs positive friends and support, not just to lift us out of the shadows of our lives. It is perfectly normal to be afraid of putting ourselves out there in fear of criticism. So I urge you to make your conscious choice of finding people who can give you this positivity instead of letting yourself blend and drown into negativity by muffling and silencing your true and undeniably unique self. We have so much to learn from each other in this library. I know what I could become because of all of the love of those around me. All of us have the potential to enrich each other's lives and brighten the unique colors of each other. Now, I've come to the close inverted speech commas on my page today for this speech. Going back to my question before, which in case had already been erased from your page, is why are our shared memories not identical? Maybe this speech will remain as a full chapter of influence at the end of the day, or perhaps a few words of acknowledgement, or maybe be lost in the subconscious editing of the author, you. No matter what, I'm honored to be able to be a scene that happened in your book and you should be honored too for being a part of such a significant moment in mine. Thank you.